good morning dear students welcome to the today's session today's session is on a small topic electronic configuration period wise and group wise in our previous discussion we understood that modern periodic table is based on the atomic number and the electronic configuration so electronic configuration is the basis for the modern periodic table now once we understood that modern periodic table is based on electronic configuration now how this electronic configuration varies in period and group that means today we have to discuss and understand electronic configuration group wise and electronic configuration period wise first we understand period wise then we go to the group wise electronic configuration in periods first let us understand what is a period period is it is the arrangement of elements from left to right in a horizontal way in the increasing order of atomic number whether you arrange from top to bottom or from left to right we have to arrange in the increasing order of atomic number that is damn sure because modern periodic table is based on the two important factors factor number 1 increasing in atomic number and factor number 2 is what grouping similar elements so keeping these two points in the mind and keeping the mendeleev's table we are continuing the modern periodic table the same saga so let us learn electronic configuration in periods that is from left to right or horizontally the value of n the principal quantum number for the valence shell is the period of the element means if in the first period hydrogen first member it is 1s1 1 is what that is n value principal quantum number value n so if that n equal to 1 means what it belongs to the first period now lithium atomic number 3 configuration 1s2 2s1 okay so the last electron enters the 2s 2 principal quantum number 2 n equal to 2 that means lithium belongs to the second period that is the meaning different energy levels can accommodate different number of electrons from the nucleus outward the maximum number of electrons that a given energy level can accommodate is given by 2n square this is strictly according to the bohr theory thus the first period with n equal to 1 can hold up to two elements by filling the lowest level 1s the elements are hydrogen and helium with electronic configuration 1s1 and 1s2 respectively this marks the complete filling of k shell because k shell can accommodate only two electrons okay so where are those two electrons maximum two electrons and uh, there are only two orbitals there is one one orbital one s opens in the case of hydrogen one s1 and in the case of helium it is one s2 so only maximum uh, number of elements in this period is 2 because k equal to 2 that is the meaning of this the second period starts with lithium and beryllium which have 3 and 4 electrons and hence the last electron enters the 2s and they have an electronic configuration 1s2 2s1 and 1s2 2s2 this is followed by the start of the 2p orbital filling okay boron onwards it starts with boron yeah and ends with neon 1s2 2s2 2p6 that means how many are there lithium ha ah, here is the ec i have written lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon totally eight what is the capacity of the l shell eight so whatever bohr said is correct i showed many times i told bohr is excellent except he has told it is the orbit fixed to the uh, level otherwise he is almost correct so second period that is uh, it can take eight electrons because the capacity of second l is eight the third period starts with sodium and ends at aragon while 
successively filling 3s and 3p orbitals 3s 2 3p totally 6 2 plus 6 8 electrons so eight elements are present in this period also that means first period contains two elements second period contains eight elements and third also contains eight elements it is according to 2 8 18 32 pattern the fourth period with n equal to 4 starts by the level 4s please refer the of the principle it begins with the potassium atomic number 19 however we know that 3d orbitals is to be filled before filling of 4p orbitals starts this is according to the n plus l borbury rule please refer our previous notes this marks the beginning of the 3d transition elements with the scandium atomic number 21 at zinc electronic configuration Aragon with the 3d 10 4 s 2 the 3d orbital is filled but how many totally 10 d okay 2 s yes. then uh, uh, this side p orbital 6 6 plus 2 8 plus 10 18 so 18 is the capacity of the fourth period the fifth period with n equal to 5 starts by filling the level 5s because principal quantum number is the period number 5s this period consists of 4d transition series in the beginning before this 3d starts now 4d starts which starts with yttrium xenon ends the period by completely filling the 5p orbitals here also 2s blocks and 6p blocks then a 10 d blocks totally again 18 the sixth period with n equal to 7 holds 32 why 32 here elements with electrons filling 6s 4f 5d and 6p main important orbital is 4f here entry of 4f starts this 4f will take 14 so 18 already is there plus 14 4f together 32 so the sixth period how many uh, elements totally totally it is 32 elements because of what because of 4f entry cerium marks the electrons entering the 4f orbital that means uh, cerium is the beginning member of the 4f series giving rise to the 4f inner transition elements called lanthanide okay so lanthanide is the beginning member of the 14 4f orbitals therefore keeping that point in the mind these 14 elements are called as lanthanide or lanthanoid series where the electron enters the 4f orbital the seventh period with n equal to 7 includes the man-made radioactive elements with electrons filling 7s 5f 6d and 7p there in the sixth period it was 4f was the important now in the seventh period the most important orbital is 5f opens and 5f slowly fills one by one 1 to 14 and making what how much so again 2 plus 14 plus 10 and 6 together again 32 similar to period 6 this period also leads to the filling of electrons to 5f orbital giving rise to the 5f inner transition elements known as actinide because the beginning member is actinium so these are called as actinoid or actinide beginning member of this is called lanthanum therefore this is called lanthanide or lanthanoid so lanthanoid and actinoid are f block elements where 4f and the 5f starts filling and these two blocks are called as f block elements these two are available less amount in the earth crust therefore these two are called by one more name they are called as rare earth in the earth they are available in rare amount therefore they are called as rare earth one more is they are radioactive because their nuclei is unstable so radioactive most of the radioactive occurs in the f block see this is the framework of the modern periodic table where you can see this is the one starts so this is s block 2s 3s 4s this is the p block boron to the neon all this is p block where 2, 2p is the outermost 3p 4p 5p and so on in between s and the p this is this is a d block so first is 3d entry 4d entry 5d entry 6d entry and from here onwards 
uh, 4F entry and from here onwards it is 5F entry. So this is called F block. 4F of F block, 5F of F block. Why they are called as lanthanoid? Because the beginning member is lanthanum, so lanthanoid. Why these are called as actinoid? Because the beginning of this series is actinium, so they are called as actinoid. So this is lanthanoid, this is actinoid. Lanthanoid 4F, actinoid 5F. Now we study group wise. The elements in the same vertical column or group have similar valence shell. This is important. In the period, they don't have similar valence configuration, whereas in the group, they have similar valence electronic configuration. Therefore, they possess the same properties. For example, group 1 elements, which are called as alkali metals, they have similar electronic configuration of NS1. See? 2s1, 3s1, 4s1, 5s1, 6s1 and so on, general ns1. So they have similar outermost electronic configuration. Therefore, they are almost chemically same, not 100%. Some, uh, most of the properties are same and these are called as what? Alkali metals. Thus, it can be seen that the properties of an element have periodic dependence upon its atomic number and not on relative atomic mass. That means modern periodic table depends on the atomic number. Why? Because atomic number is most important than the atomic mass. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Tomorrow we'll discuss some other concept. Thank you once again.